Marine Serre has done what no other modern designer has been able to do perfected the art of the desirable monogram that's commercially very successful while still feeling exclusive. So, how did she get to the top of the industry at such a young age? Marine Serre as a company was technically founded in 2017 by Marine Serre herself with her boyfriend Pippin van Eden, who would later go on to be CEO, and with help from Marine Serre's sister. But, to tell you the full story, let's start with her university collections, plural. Technically, her first collection was in 2015 and was her fourth year presentation at university. The collection is good, it's just not really Marine Ser good yet, and we don't see any brand signifiers in the collection. The early stages are there, like this silhouette comes back in future collections, as do the pleating and of course stretch undergarments, but it's not developed fully quite yet. I know I'm being a bit harsh on this collection, even though it is a very good collection, it's just the comparison between this collection and the following collection is so extreme that it makes this collection seem a little bit half-baked. This following collection, Autumn Winter 17, was called Radical Call for Love, and is said to fuse 19th century European garments with Arabic luxurious garments with sportswear cuts and sportswear aesthetics. It's just a ridiculously strong collection and still looks fashionable and relevant now, almost five and a half years later, featuring motifs and identifiers that are now completely synonymous with the brand, like skin tight undershirts, the moon print, and sporty couture silhouettes. I don't quite know how to express the sheer impact this collection had in comparison to most graduate collections, but I think the fact that it was internationally stocked is very telling, especially because they got stocked by extremely well-respected stores like Dover Street Market, Essence, Nordstrom, and in Paris, a very well-respected store named A Broken Arm, where the collection sold out completely. The collection was shortlisted for the Hure Festival and nominated for both the Andam Prize for Emerging Designers and the LVMH Prize for Young Designers, the latter of which she actually won for her graduate collection, beating out influential nominees Martine Rose, Yunnan at Ambush, and Molly Goddard. Naturally, this set up Marine to have an outstanding career in fashion, easily scoring internships with Sarah Burton at Alexander McQueen, Mathieu Blasi at Maison Margiela, and Raph Simmons at Dior, which then ultimately led her to secure a position as a junior designer at Balenciaga, which would go on to fund her debut collection as a solo designer in Autumn Winter 18. But just to backtrack a little bit, she did actually have a capsule collection for Spring Summer 18 while doing her internships, which mostly comprised of retail pieces and does feature all of the brand identifiers mentioned before, though importantly it was the first inclusion of bags for the brand. It's just that the Autumn Winter 18 collection is often considered to be the debut, so that's what I will be respecting in this video. The Autumn Winter 18 collection doubled down on the Moon logo print for the brand in a way that really increased desirability while allowing the brand to stay cool in the eyes of fashion enthusiasts. The Moon symbol is inspired simply because it's one of the oldest symbols in history, introduced to her through her Islamic background, resonating and staying with Maureen through her interest in fashion due to its timelessness and ability to evolve with the time that it exists in. In fact, much like the moon print being introduced from her Islamic background, a common source of inspiration is often her own daily life, which has persisted in her work through the years of designing, allowing a political edge to her work. Marine frequently and persistently is seen making statements on topics that influence her directly, like practicality and safety, as seen with these biker masks inspired by herself cycling around Paris while being dissatisfied with the air quality, or with her views on overconsumption and sustainability, which she is probably best known for within the industry. These statements on overconsumption and sustainability are seen as early as this Autumn Winter 18 collection, where she introduces four different lines, all under the mainline brand, none of which diffusion lines. They were named the Green Line, which was dedicated to being solidly from recycled materials, the Red Line, which was for red carpet demi couture, the gold line, which was for everyday demi couture, and the white line, which is pret-a-porter or ready to wear. 
There is also technically Borderline, which is underwear, but it is a little bit different because it's underwear. And I don't know when it was officially started. It wasn't in this collection. So I'm not covering it for this video, but it does sell really well even to this day and arguably is the brand's main cash cow of a product. These four lines have gone on to evolve into being slightly different now. For example, by spring summer 2020, the green line was absorbed completely by the other three lines. Furthermore, in any and all of these lines from the brand, you can actually tell which pieces are 100% recycled as they feature a special regenerated tag, which is on over 50% of everything that the whole brand produces. But this is all getting ahead of ourselves. As of this point in the timeline, they have only just started with the four different categories of product offering as a way to express her opinions about overconsumption. So I'm gonna take us back in the timeline to spring, summer 19 and autumn, winter 19, which continue literally all of the themes I've mentioned so far, the moon print, skin tight tops, sporty couture, recycled materials, masks. They're now also introducing menswear and children's wear in spring, summer 19 and puffer materials in autumn, winter 19, which means that her core offering is really quite significant by this point. And it's already one of the hottest and most respected new brands in the world from a young designer. Then spring, summer 2020 is the first slight shift in Martine's offering, but it is expertly navigated. The brand built a foundation that's very solid on which they can experiment with in a way that doesn't alienate their key audience, which is blatant when looking at her ridiculously long stockist list for spring summer 2020, even after they did this shift, which is most obvious in the reduction of the moon print all the way back to the 24th look and after far back in the collection, putting more emphasis on the recycled materials and silhouettes of the collection. And interestingly, this collection with all of the reduced key elements was one of Marine's most successful, proving she could design expertly around a changing climate without relying on a logo or monogram to move product. Also interestingly about this collection is the addition of this hood. Named the Sisterhood by Marine, which returned in the following season for Autumn Winter 2020, as shown by Louis Pigeon and Marine Serre here. And something I find interesting that Mr. Pigeon said is that truly obsessed designers self-reference without even realizing it. He was actually referring to the jacket underneath, as you can see, but I think with the hands lowered, it too visually is the moon symbol in the denim fabric and it must have been in the puffer before it was deconstructed to two garments. I think this speaks to the evolution of the moon as a symbol as mentioned by Marine earlier and evidences how right she was about its pervasive malleability. The collection is absolutely fabulous. And as I mentioned before, it's the real absorption of the green line into making almost everything from the brand recycled. So to have been able to incorporate that while not needing to compromise on the aesthetic is really commendably achieved here. So much so that Marine finally won the Andam prize, which you may remember she was a finalist for for her graduation collection. She said that the prize, more so than helping grow the brand, just helped them stay in business. We all know that COVID was tough on hundreds and thousands of small brands, so it made me consider how relieving it must have been for her trying to run a company to have that boost right when they probably needed it most. Following that exceptional win, Spring Summer 21 once again takes the brand for a trip. The video for the show is truly the best she has ever produced, and the collection itself pairs down the brand to their version of Millimality that almost harkens back to that Spring Summer 18 collection she did. The one that quote unquote wasn't her debut, the only one not to have walked on a catwalk, which is such an interesting reference because this collection was her first since the debut collection that also wasn't on the catwalk due to the global crisis at the time. It's so beautifully self-referential in a way that we've come to know from Marine and perfectly continues the business in spite of the pandemic, meaning that the brand was extremely popular amongst fashionable people and had caught the eye of Zarina Akers, who asked Marine Serre to make several custom pieces for her client, Beyonce, which she wore in her Black is King documentary in the already music video. Obviously everything Beyonce does is news all over, but Black is King was huge. And when it came out, so was this video. So the music video pushed Marine Serre's brand to new heights of fame and even saw searches rise 
100%, meaning that the moon print became the most popular design of the year. Although, to be fair, I'm referencing this article that was only written four days after the music video was released, so I doubt the validity of the article, even though I know that the print really was everywhere on social media at the time. However, in the midst of all of this success, boyfriend turned CEO Pippin van Eden decides to leave the company in September 2020, leaving Marine as the sole head of the company. Then, in December 2020, just before the Autumn Winter 21 show, she debuted her only collaboration, still to this date, I believe, with ASAP Rocky. This collection in the promo shots I don't think looks too strong, to be honest. To me, it feels more like ASAP than Marine, but looking at the retail pieces themselves, my initial reaction is definitely wrong, and it's definitely very clearly Marine. Autumn Winter 21 and Spring Summer 22 also released to huge audiences online. They were easily accessible and really well received, beautiful videos that included fashions that one would immediately be recognized by any Marine fan. So, Marine was now being watched by the whole world with this new fame, meaning that her Autumn Winter 22 collection was the most watched and highly anticipated collection the brand had put out so far. You probably don't need reminding, but the last three collections were all in Corona days, so that's why they've all been presented in video form. But now, Paris Fashion Week is pretty much all returned. This collection, Autumn Winter 22, is the only show so far with almost none of the things that a customer would have come to think of from Marine Serre. Even the monograms mentioned before are simply not there that I can see. The logo was there in this diamond jacquard, just not the monogram that we've come to know. Instead though, we have developments on silhouettes and specific garments. This skirt made of scarves was originally shown in Autumn Winter 21. It's a bit hard to see on the catwalk, but here is Marine holding it, so it's definitely from this collection. The raglan sleeve jumper she's wearing is also from the Autumn Winter 21 collection and returns as a silhouette in Autumn Winter 22, as does the sisterhood that I mentioned before from Spring Summer 21. So. I would say this is probably the real separation for a new era for Marine, one very much with recycling at its core. However, that doesn't mean they're leaving behind the core offering by any means. Instead, they've set up a base for retail that hopefully will bring in consistent sales, with the undershirt being the cash cow of course, from which allows funding for development of her vision and time to produce the more intricate red line pieces for the catwalk, which she said in 2020 do not actually sell, but are just great promotion for the brand and for what can be done with repurposed materials. The collection was well received overall, though critics seem to say that it's removed from the marine world, as I mentioned before. Especially critics missed elements like denim, especially because just a few months later she would release what I can only describe to be a process documentary with Dover Street Market that specifically focuses on denim for a whole section of the documentary. Critics also thought that they had seen this aesthetic from the brand before, it was a bit similar to what they had seen, so they would like something new which personally I disagree with, but perhaps if it was in another textile or in another color, it would have felt fresher. And both myself and these critics who I'm directly referencing, Callum Knight and Hetty Malik of Show Studio, would be satisfied. And the criticism didn't quite end there, because the general public also had some complaints. Marine Serre had decided with all of this new exposure to invite the public to a weekend-long exhibition at Lafayette Anticipation that would show the process of how the team turned bulk purchase secondhand clothing into couture. But despite the venue being absolutely massive, Apparently, there were queues outside of people that just couldn't get in, which probably wouldn't have been a problem if Marine hadn't literally just invited the public. This criticism was clearly taken to heart by the brand because upon their return in Menswear Week Spring Summer 23, the venue, once again open to the public, was a huge, expansive sporting venue. As Vogue puts it, it was in the spirit of her brand's long-established strives for inclusivity to want everyone to be able to see and experience the show as well as the clothes. 
I don't really understand how that relates to the show being shown in Menswear Week, to be honest. Even Vogue pointed out the strangeness of it being held on the Menswear Week instead of the Women's Wear Week. Personally, I think it may have been because more people would be able to attend a show that was at this distance to the other shows in the Men's Wear Week, as opposed to the truly crammed Women's Wear Week. Though, it's not really a criticism. I really loved this collection and I loved the setting. In regards to the setting, I know truly nothing about sports, but I can see that the collection was heavily inspired by the venue due to a good portion of the garments being sportswear or being paired with sporting accessories. We also see the return of denim, we see the return of the monogram, and though they do keep the diamond monogram much more, at least until the final four looks, which are all clad in the monogram, I am happy to see all three present. Also, interestingly, she seems in this collection to have returned to the previous tonal color palette, away from the brown tones into a much more welcoming palette of greens, pinks, blues, and of course, black and white. This all basically lands us to today. I'm really excited to see what is next for the brand and I'm not really sure when we're gonna see the next collection from her. Marine Serre has quite the following these days so she can really afford to show off season maybe in another menswear week like she did before. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe and turn on the bell to be notified of future videos or check out the videos on your screen or the full playlist of videos here for further viewing.